Well, again, I want to invite you to come on down to the platform. There are some seats already set up, and on the other side of the field, there are some chairs that are stacked, and you're welcome to get as many chairs as you want and just place them where you want to place them, and we'd encourage you to stay with us right after our our time here. We'll have a, a, a picnic as well, and there's food being set up on the uh, on the blacktop over here. So I'm going to ask that the, uh, that the children's games go ahead and be closed down and the swing sets go ahead and be closed down for the morning. If you have children that are uh, out on the slides or out on the swing sets, I would encourage you to, to bring those on in. And uh, there's, some, there's some coffee as well. If you uh, just, just behind this senior seating, there's coffee, there's water there. Help yourself to that. If you have children that are preschool and younger and you'd like for uh, them to, to be a part of a, a, a time with other uh, little ones this morning inside, you're welcome to use our, our, our uh, child care there as well. You just move towards the buildings and folks can uh, direct you to, that, to where that is. Also, there's a green Southwest Kids tent right in the middle of the field. And if you have children that are uh, older than preschool, they can get a clipboard there. And with that clipboard, have some things to color along and and just follow along with what we're talking about this morning. And so it would be great for them if you want to take advantage of that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call out the names. And these are names of folks that have placed in the uh, 5K run this morning. And so as I call your name, I'm going to ask that you come all the way down and stand in front of the platform. And what I'm going to do is call the names of everyone who is uh, getting an award this morning. And then I will talk, I will say what the award is after you've already come down. So I'll start, uh, well, let me just call the names. Martin, Nick. Ryan Parmenter, Eric Valdez, and as I call your name, come on down, Raleigh Cad, Morgan Felt, Kristen, and it's either Gower or Gower, Ezra Carpenter, Elsa Danes, and again, as you hear your name, please come and just line up in, in, in front here. Jalen Walksmith, Quincy Marshall, Gavin Martin, Krista Haas, Jason Van Genderen, Chantel, Kenny, Geyer, Madeline Desmond, Joseph Cato, Anita Matthews, Tony Montana, Rochelle Peralta, Mark Benedict, Michelle Kershaw, The guy, wave your hand if you're the guy. Come, come on. Mikhail Carpenter, Scott Shoemaker, Stella Dinwiddle, Bill Blackwell, and Fabiola Lopez. All right, if you've heard your name, then please come down, and I'm going to walk back through these names and let you know what they, what they won. And I'm going to start with the females 60 plus. And the winner for the females 60 plus is Fabiola Lopez. And they, we, have, we have an award for you right here. Good job. 
The male winner for the 60 plus is Bill Blackwell. And after you get your medal, just stay, stay up on the front row here. We'd like to get a picture when we're finished here. Female, 50 to 59, Stella Dinwiddle. Good job. Male, 50 to 59, Scott Shoemaker. Good job. Female, 44 to 49, Mikhail Carpenter. Male, 40 to 49, is the guy. Oh, that would be you. <laughs> the guy is Jason D'Elso. Did you run it bare feet? Okay, not this time. Good job. Female, 40 to 43, Michelle Kershaw. Good job. Male, 40 to 43, Mark Benedict. Female, 35 to 39, Rochelle Peralta. And they're all good times. I'm not calling the times, though, because this is uh, the runners tell me that with all the heels, you aren't really getting a PR on this course. And, uh, but they did run some fast runs for this course, I tell you what. Male, 35 to 39, Tony Montana. Female, 30 to 34, Anita Matthews. And male category, 30 to 34, Joseph Cato. Female, 25 to 29, Madeline Desmond. Male, 25 to 29, Kenny Geyer. Am I right? Female, 20 to 24, Chantel Ventura Germosen. Male, 20 to 24, Jason Van Genderen. Female, 15 to 19, Krista Haas. Male, 15 to 19, Gavin Martin. Female, 12 to 24, Quincy Marshall. Male, 12 to 14, Jalen Walksmith. Female, 11 and under, Elsa Danes. Male, 11 and under, Ezra Carpenter. And we have two more categories I want to call out, and there are just three names in each category. But before I call these names out, Steve Hills, where are you? Is he way at the finish line still? Steve, Steve's the one that started all of you walkers, started all of you runners. He'll come back up at the end, and he'll start us for our, one fun, our uh, fun run at the end as well. Let's give Steve a big round of applause. Did a great job in getting this together, and, and I know there's a team of you that make this happen. Thank you. So female, overall, I want to give a first, second, and third place. I'll, go with the, I'll start with the third place. Overall female, these are the fastest ladies. Third place, Kristen Gower. Overall female, second place, Morgan Felt. And the fastest lady out here, Raleigh Cad. Good 
job. All right, and we have the male overall, first, second, and third. For third place, Eric Valdez. The second fastest is Ryan Parmenter. And the fastest guy out here, is Nick your first or last name? And put him back. We got two first names. All right, we'll take it. The fastest guy out here is right here, Nick Martin. Well, congratulations to all you runners. And let's give them one more big round of applause. And, I, and I'm going to ask all you winners if you'll just move down to your right, and we'd like to take a photo of all of you with your, with your medals, and, and uh, just good, good job. Well done. Well, if you haven't found a seat yet, you're welcome to come on in. There's still a plenty of, of table or uh, chairs that are stacked up on the uh, your far right side of the field. Help yourself to, to get a chair or two uh, or however many you need for, for how many you have in your group. And uh, love you to join us. The, the slides will open back up um, after the picnic. The... Uh, We'll have a picnic right after the, we start the fun run. We'll have a fun run right after the service. And it uh, looks like there may be a few more seats in the, in the tents where the uh, senior adults are. Good to see all of you over here this morning. And you're in a great spot because if you're in that tent, you're going to get served for the picnic. And the rest of us will go and uh, serve ourselves. So if you want to move you into that tent, you're, you're welcome to do that. We ready? All right. If you should have received a program when you came in, and we have some some folks here uh, with programs and and are holding them up high. And so, if you don't have a program as they walk through, wave your hand because for the next um, hour or so. You'll, you'll need this program. We're going to, to sing some songs together, and the songs are all listed in the programs, and then there's going to be a talk, and uh, that's in the program as well, so you can follow along. There's some Bible verses that, would, uh, that, you, can, that you can look at, and so you'll, you'll need one of these programs, and so just uh, let them see your hands as they walk through with the programs, They're walking through on both sides. So take it, if you have a program, and open it up, and the first song just says it's the doxology. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. There's a psalm that reads, the first few verses reads like this. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. And he lists some of these benefits. Forgives all your iniquity. Heals all your diseases. Redeems your life from the pit. Crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. He satisfies you with good. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Let's stand together and let's sing and worship God this morning.
sing, sing. The Lord is our deliverer. He makes all things new. It's great to see you. Uh, I was a little, I was sitting back there a little bit, and I started down one aisle, and it said the fun run, and I said, no, I don't go there. I, I came down another aisle, but uh, the fun run is coming, and uh, it was great to watch you run. I was impressed. I got tired just watching, but uh, this has been so much good times out here, uh, worshiping the Lord, singing praise to our Deliverer, and it's good to see you. And I, somebody told me at the softball game Monday night, wow, I hate to see these come to an end, and I said, I do too. But uh, next Sunday, we will be indoors, and I'll tell you what. We have similar times if you're new with us, and maybe you've never even come inside, you know, feel very welcome. We do the same thing. This is what we do. We worship the Lord, and uh, we get to do it 52 times a year every first day of the week. We start our day, or start our week, the day the Lord Jesus Christ rose, and uh, you've got stuff in your program there that tells you a little bit about lots of other things going on here. It's fun to be part of this community. But uh, I want you to take your program, if you will, and open it up because, as Gary mentioned, <clears throat> there's scripture in here because I know uh, it's a little bit hard to get your Bible out here, so I've been putting the scripture in, uh, in our program. And so if you look on the inside, left-hand side, under welcome there, today's message No boasting in heaven, except, and uh, our text is Jeremiah 9. We've been looking at quite a few of these texts from way before Christ, hundreds of years. Isaiah, 700 years. Jeremiah is roughly 600 years before Christ, and yet his message is timeless, and I want to just uh, read it, and then we'll comment on it. In fact, uh, it's my habit to pray before I read, Lord, right now we ask you to open our eyes so we'll see what you've written here, and we'll understand and know what you're saying Be our teacher, we pray. We thank you that this is your very word. And so we invite your Holy Spirit to take the sword of the Spirit and use it in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. That our priorities, our values, the way we treat people, everything, Lord, we want to hear from you. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do here in Jesus' name. Amen. Thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts Boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Thus says the Lord. He says it over and over. We're listening to the very word of God. Friday morning I met with a group of guys and uh, I have been thinking through and thinking a lot about Isaiah who wrote a hundred years earlier than Jeremiah, seven centuries before Christ. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, he's often called. This chapter, if you could look at this whole chapter, it begins, he said, Oh, that my head, 
Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. He lived in a day like ours where things were upside down, where the culture he lived in was so mixed up that it made him weep. And he said, I can't weep enough. And I'll tell you, this is relevant to the day we live in. That's for sure. But I had Isaiah on my mind Friday morning when we gathered. And I, uh, I began little group we have, we just, I said, ho, I quoted Isaiah 55, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And Jesus Christ said, when he was here, he stood up in a great time like this, a great festival. And on the last day, when everybody was near, he cried out, we're told in John 7, if anybody's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me will find living water. And from his own soul will come forth. Not only will Jesus Christ quench our thirsts, that gnawing emptiness in life. He, we were meant for him, and he fulfills us. And he not only quenches their deepest needs of our heart, but he causes us to be, he said, he went on to say, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of the scripture. And I have to think he had Isaiah 55 on his mind. And I quoted that verse, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to me and drink. He who has no money, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend your money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy, Isaiah asked plaintively. And I asked that of myself and the guys we were just gathering, sitting around together. And I said, why do people, why do we, why are we so prone to go for what doesn't satisfy? What isn't bread? Give our whole life to things that don't really meet our need. Listen carefully, Isaiah went on to say, shema, shema, listen. Carefully listen and delight yourself in abundance. Eat what is good. And the whole 55th of Isaiah is about his word, his word. Thus says the Lord, when you turn to the scripture, you're turning to the Lord himself. And he said, incline your ear, come to me, listen that you may live. And I, being kind of a I don't know, pessimist or whatever I said. Why is it that so few people listen to God's word? And here we are, hundreds of us listening right now. So I shouldn't say that really. But I said it Friday morning. And one of the guys said, you know, and I said, I said, when's the last time you ran into a Bible reader? And I'd ask you that, by the way. When's the last time you just ran into a person who reads the Bible? Well, you say, Scott, we're all reading it right now. And I say, yeah. And actually, one of the guys said, well, you know, not everybody doesn't read the Bible. I was lamenting that in our culture, we've got this book and we don't listen to it. But one of the guys said, well, my nephew just recently, just going into college, got an athletic scholarship, realizes he's heard about Christ he knows about Christ, but he'd never really gotten serious. He read in the last two weeks, well, this is about three weeks ago. So about three weeks ago, he read the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, in two weeks. And then he told one of his relatives who's been praying for him, I've received Christ. The scripture leads us to Christ. Everything about the Bible is designed to show us our need for God himself, Jesus Christ. And I had just uh, heard that week, in fact, and it, when he told me that, it jogged my mind Friday morning to think of the interview that I'd seen of a man who was raised in affluence. His dad was a dentist. He was at the end of his dental, dental school, and he was going to, you know, he was an achiever. And he got mixed up in drugs. And to pay for his habit during dental school, he started selling drugs. 
And then he got nabbed. And he was put in prison. And he said, I never dreamed I'd be in prison. And then he went to throw something in the garbage can in the prison in Atlanta. And he said, as I started to throw it in the trash, there was something on the trash can. I picked it up, and it was a little New Testament the Gideons issued. And he began to read. And he said, I had time. (laughs) And he said he read through the Bible five times. And he came to know Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, the Bible is the lifeline to knowing who Jesus Christ really is. And so our text says, thus says the Lord. And Jesus stood up and said, if you're thirsty, come to me. Isaiah says, ho, if you're thirsty, come to the waters. Come without money and without cost. Freely God will give. It's an amazing thing. Thus says the Lord. Now, in our times out here, we've been looking at these kinds of texts because they're all over the Bible. And as I think back through what we've looked at this summer, behold, Isaiah said, you're God. And he gave the text for John the Baptist hundreds of years later to say, behold, you're God. And he pointed at Jesus Christ. And that's in Isaiah 40. And later in chapter 40, he says, to whom would you liken me? There's no one like me. To whom would you liken me that I should be his equal? Lift up your eyes and look. Look at these stars. He's the one who calls forth the galaxies by number. He's got them all named because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. When you look at Jesus Christ, you're looking at the creator of the universe, the one who spoke, and it was done. He said, Let there be light, and there was light. And then uh, we took a look at another text in Isaiah where Isaiah, another week we looked at it in 25 where he says, Behold, our God, our God, whom we've waited for. And listen to what Isaiah said. He will swallow up death for all time, and the Lord God will wipe away every tear from all faces. He will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. He will wipe away every tear, Isaiah said. And the Bible closes in Revelation 21 with God dwelling among his people and wiping every tear from our eyes because there will be no more sorrow or mourning or pain in heaven. Now, people ask me about heaven quite a bit. Quite often I get questions. Will there be coffee in heaven? (laughs) Yeah, there will be. Will there be golf? No. He says there'll be no more sorrow or pain. (laughs) Will there be chocolate chips? You know, ah, we can kid about it. You know, we can speculate. But every now and then, and that really brings me to my title. No boasting in heaven. Except every now and then a sermon title almost gets it. <laughs> every now and then a song. Eric Clapton wrote, No Tears in Heaven. It became his biggest song. No tears in heaven. And he wrote it out of pain. He wrote it out of the tragic death of his four-year-old son. It took him about 12 months in deep pain to write that song and then actually sing it. And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Would you know my name? If I saw you in heaven, 
Would it be the same if I saw you in heaven? And then it's, it's a bluesy, plaintive melody. And it changes gears, changes keys, and goes kind of minor. I must be strong. I must carry on because I know I don't belong in heaven. No tears in heaven. He got it right. There will be no tears in heaven. And that song came to my mind when I was reading this text and decided to title this No Boasting in Heaven. Clapton sang that song and it became a mega big big seller. But the pain in singing it He wrote it in 92. His son died in 91. By 2004, he said, I can't sing it anymore. And he quit singing it. He never performs it. He said, the emotions are just too raw. As he speculates, really, and who can't feel his angst and his pain, would you know my name if I see you in heaven? I got to be strong, carry on, because... I know I don't belong in heaven. Um, He doesn't sing it anymore. People ask me, will there be tears in heaven? And I say, no, I've got God's word on it. He's, but I have to put it this way, no tears in heaven except those whom he has dried and wiped away. Revelation, the last book of the Bible. You see in chapter 21, a new heaven and a new earth coming down. The first heaven and the first earth passed away. Jesus said heaven and earth. We saw this last week when we were looking at that beautiful picture of that woman worshiping. And we looked back and just read some context. And Jesus said, heaven and earth are going to pass away. As beautiful as this creation is, it's going to pass away. But my word will not pass away. Well, you get to the end of the Bible and heaven and earth pass away as he tells us the future. And a new heaven and a new earth. And God will be among his people, it says. Verse 3 of Revelation 21. And he will wipe away every tear. And earlier in that same book, he said, The lamb shall be their shepherd. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He'll wipe away every tear because he wiped away every sin when he died in our place. He erased them. He canceled them. And he's going to wipe away every tear because that's the kind of God he is. Is there tears in heaven? No, except those that the Lamb of God, our shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, has wiped away. But our text says, notice, thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom, and let not a rich, wis, wise, uh, mighty man boast of his might, let not a rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts Boast of this. You can't miss the word. He's not talking about tears now. He's talking about boasting. Three times in verse 23. Twice in verse 24. Is there boasting in heaven? No. No boasting in heaven. Except, verse 24, let him who boasts. If you're going to boast, he says... Boast in the Lord. Now, this word not only shows up five times right here in this little paragraph, but this word is a very common word in the Old Testament. It's usually translated praise. I looked it up over 200 times, this word or one that's derived from it. Halal. Hallelujah, praise Yah, praise Yahweh, praise the Lord. Usually, 165 times, we hear it all the time, 
119 of those 165 times of that word, it's translated praise. But in the context here, and I want us to hear this because he's saying, there'll be no praise in heaven. What do you mean? Well, that's why I couldn't just, that was my title originally, and then I said, accept. There'll be a lot of praise in heaven because we will praise the one who got us there, the one who died in our behalf so that we could go to heaven, so that we could enjoy what we were meant for, a relationship with the Creator God. And so this word is often translated boast because you boast in what you praise. You glory, and it's translated glory at times. We glory in the Lord. We boast in the Lord. We praise the Lord. We trust Him. And yet, notice what He says. Let not a wise man boast of his wisdom. Let not a mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches. The Bible is so timeless. Because he knows how prone we are to boast in our own wisdom, to boast in our own strength, to boast in our net worth, our riches, our money, or stuff money can buy. You see, in Jeremiah's day, people were tempted with the same thing you and I are tempted with, to think that life is all about your intellect, your wisdom, your own wisdom. Figuring it out. Or your power. You're at the top of the heap. You've climbed the ladder and you're actually the CEO. Or your money. I've got four houses and three cars and on and on it goes. If I could just have four houses and, you know, we, we hope in, we trust in, we exult in, we glory in the wrong things. And he says, don't. Don't boast in your intellect. Don't boast in your power. And don't boast in your money. But boy, we're good at it. Here in Portland, (laughs) we, we have arguments We guys that are into sports, who's the greatest of all time? G-O-A-T. Who's the goat? And you can read any day of the week. If you get on your phone, you'll hear arguments going on about who's the goat. Greatest of all time. And that's true not just in sports. It's true in everything. We tend to boast in man. Now, the key to boasting, the key to praise, the key thing about glorying is the object. Look at verse 24. He says, if you're going to boast, make sure you're boasting in the right thing. And did you notice verse 23? In each case, don't boast in your wisdom, your power, your money. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, the mighty man his might, the rich man his riches. No. It's just like faith. People talk about faith. You know, we throw the word around in a faith community, faith-based, faith this, faith that. Are you a man of faith? As if faith is an entity in itself. The key to faith, the only value in faith is the object of your faith. I'm not asking you, do you believe? (laughs) Do you believe in him? Let him who boasts, not boast in his this or his that, but boast in the Lord. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord, verse 24 says. You see, the object of your boast or your praise, praising yourself will never get you anywhere. And yet, last time when we said, you know, that we saw this beautiful act of worship, I said, there's so many ways to worship the wrong object. 
And the biggest one of all is to worship ourselves. Look out for our needs and our comfort and what we want and get up in the morning and act as if this life is all about me. And we were created for the Lord. And so always it's the object of your boasting that is so important. And he says there will be no boasting in heaven, glorying in self. Sometimes I I try to get this across to people because people think, just by default we think, well, if you do good enough, if you work hard enough, you know, just like in running, if you, if you work out, you'll get there, you'll improve your time. And we're so used to achieving that way that we think we could somehow get right with God by just doing our thing. And we boast in ourselves. We trust in ourselves. We praise ourselves. And it's wicked. There'll be no boasting in heaven. David wrote in the fifth psalm, you're, you, he's speaking to the Lord, you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. No evil dwells with thee. The boastful shall not pre- stand in your presence before your eyes. Oh, no. Your eyes are too holy for that. The 10th Psalm says, the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. <laughs> it's boastful and arrogant to just say, I did it my way. I like to do it my way. Do your own thing. And that almost characterizes our culture, doesn't it? And God calls it wickedness. No, the boastful will not stand in his presence. There is no boasting in heaven except, don't miss this, verse 24, except praising, trusting in, Leaning upon, resting in God himself, glorying. That's why Christians, we love to get out here and just sing praise. When we opened the, uh, actually before we started the service, somebody told me, oh, he looked at the first song, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. And he said, we, we sing that before meals. And I said, my son-in-law brought that into our family. When we uh, gather as a family, sometimes he'll just, just lead us in singing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praising the Lord. Exulting in Him. If you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. And notice specifically what it says. That he understands and knows me, for I am the Lord. Do you know him? Do you understand who he is? Jesus said it this way toward the end of his life when Philip came to him and said, you know, if you just show us the Father. And he said, Philip, have I been so long with you and you haven't come to know me? You can be around him. You can be churchy. You can be sitting in this crowd and not really know him. If you're going to boast, boast in the Lord that you understand and know him. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they might know thee, he prayed this, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. To know him is everything. To understand who he is, to appreciate, and then to worship him, to glory in him. Paul put it this way, he said, oh, I count everything else. Philippians 3.8, he said, I, can, I consider everything else rubbish compared to knowing him. Oh, that I might know him. And he said that oh, about two or three decades after he'd come to know Christ. He was so overwhelmed. And many of you who've known the Lord for a long time, you'd say the same thing. It just, in fact, a guy told me we were standing there looking right before the race. And he said, the more you learn, the less you know. He says, not that way in my business. The more I learn, the more I know. But he said, in the Bible and in God's ways, the more I learn, the less I know. It's just endless what I want to learn about him, to understand and know him. And what does it say? Look at it. To understand and know that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. 
For I delight in these things. Oh, do you know that the Lord is full of loving kindness? Chesed. Sometimes the Bibles translate it loyal love, steadfast love, loving kindness, mercy. His mercies endure forever. Do you know today that the God who says, why are you drinking what won't satisfy? Why do you pay your wages for what is not bread? Come to me and I'll give you life. Incline your ear. Listen that you may live. This God who says, if you're weary and tired, you come to me. He's a God of mercy and loving kindness. And he's a God, look at the rest of verse 24, of justice and righteousness. He's not a God who changes the rules every time we decide he should. He doesn't go with the fads. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's righteous. He's the definition of right and wrong in a world that says we can reinvent these things. And so we're saying bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. Male is female and female is male. Up is down, down is up. We're saying we can do... It's insanity. No, God says, I'm righteous. And I love justice. There's that longing in every human heart. Everybody in Portland knows that things aren't right. And we long for real justice, righteousness. God is a God of righteousness and justice. Now notice if you look at that, you kind of see the tension there. He's a God of mercy, and yet he doesn't bend the rules. When Christ came, John wrote of him, He's full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ came so that God can be merciful to us. The righteous one died for the unrighteous. And I think I put, I got to look here. Yeah, I did. Romans 3. Take a look at it. Because I went to the New Testament and these things, uh, this matter of boasting in the New Testament, it comes out the very same way. Turn to Romans 3. Or you don't have to turn there. It's right there. I've got to turn there. But uh, these great explanations of this good news underline for us that God is righteous and yet merciful. He is full of grace and truth. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're sinners, all of us. Being justified, declared right as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Christ paid for us. Christ paid for my guilt and my sin, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time that God might be righteous, just, and the justifier of a sinner like me. The justifier of the one whose faith is in Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God says, and you'll be saved. I put my faith in Christ. I didn't even understand it. I just knew I was a sinner. And I was declared right with God. Every Christian comes as a sinner. Every one of us on this field is a sinner. Most of us probably, I hope, have realized it. And we've embraced Christ as our Savior. You can today embrace him. And when you put your faith in him, you don't have to understand everything. He doesn't ask us to understand him. He asks us to worship him. And we love him because he first loved us. And we all stand on the same ground. I don't deserve heaven. There'll be no boasting in heaven. How did you get here? Well, you wouldn't believe it. I was a pastor. Yuck. Well, how did you get here? Well, I was a good family man, and I tried to do my best. Oh, I made some mistakes, but I was devoted to my wife. 
There'll be none of that kind of talk in heaven. How did you get here? Well, I was helping people all the time. I, was, I, I had quite a bit of money, and I gave, I gave at least uh, five, well, sometimes 10% of it to help the poor. There'll be none of that talk, no boasting. And look at, you say, Scott, are you just making that up? Look at verse 27. Where then is boasting? It's excluded. By what kind of law of works? You don't work your way to heaven. Everybody in heaven got there the same way. How'd you get to heaven? Christ died for sinners. I was guilty. I'm ashamed to look back. Christ took my sin in his, in his body on the cross. Where then is boasting? It's excluded. By what kind of principle? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. Well, then Romans 4 says, if you've got it there, I think you do. Yeah. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? What about the Old Testament guys? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about. But he just said boasting is excluded. There'll be no boasting before God. Abraham wasn't justified by works. What does the scripture say? Verse 3. Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. No, there'll be no boasting in heaven. One could multiply the passages. Some of you could quote by heart Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 that's right there on your sheet. For by grace, undeserved favor. By grace you've been saved through faith. You lay hold of his grace by faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of merit or works, that no one should, what? Boast. There will be no boasting in heaven. Have you understood? Do you know him? Do you know what he did for you? Have you understood why he died on the cross? Paul, we're going to be getting back into Galatians when we get inside. And in chapter 6 of Galatians, Paul has labored to get this across because he knows how much we need to hear it. And he says at the end, may it never be meganointo, may it never be, God forbid, absolutely not, that I would ever boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world was crucified to me and I to the world. Oh, there'll be no boasting in heaven except boasting in the Lord and what he accomplished for us. Well, we've come full circle. And they tell me that a sermon, somebody said, how many points should a good sermon have? And the wise man said, well, it should have at least one. And usually they say you ought to have three. So I'll give you three points just to aid us in memorizing, huh? Just remember, not memorizing, but just remembering where we've been today. There'll be no tears in heaven. Clapton got it right. And we don't deserve to be in heaven. And just in a vague kind of way, I've got to be strong and carry on because I know I don't belong in heaven. I, I'd long for him to know that he can come into heaven. There'll be no tears in heaven except those God wipes away. He'll wipe away, erase our tears because he wiped away and erased our sins. He canceled them out. No tears in heaven. No boasting in heaven except let him who boasts boast in the Lord. And thirdly, nobody in heaven. Nobody in heaven except those who've embraced Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I know our culture hates to hear that. But if your ears have been opened, you realize if God himself came down here and had to die for my sin, 
How foolish, how small, how ignorant of me to try to pay it off with some good deeds. It was so serious. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus Christ died in your place. Nobody in heaven except those who are in Christ have enjoyed him and hence they praise him. They exalt him. They glory in him. Christians are marked by praising and singing to the Lord because we know he's our everything. Do you know him? Do you understand what he did for you? Oh, trust in him. Your hope can be built on nothing less. And we love to sing about it. Our hope, our joy, our boasting, our exulting is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his blood and his rising. We're going to sing that song. Lord, as we bow before you and before we continue to worship, I thank you, Lord, that there are no tears in heaven. With all the sorrow and pain and mourning in this life, Lord, we long for that day when you set things right and you're going to. And I praise you that there will be no boasting in heaven, Lord. And I praise you that everyone in heaven will be there because of Jesus Christ. And we have no hope but him. No trust but him. We can't rely on or depend on anything or anyone else, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. Uh, we praise you for this. We'll praise you throughout eternity. There will be tons of praise in heaven, tons of boasting, but it will be in you. We will say hallelujah, praise Yahweh forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand one more time and let's lift our voice to the Lord. Jesus. 
I'm going to ask you to take a seat for just another moment. It's good to have you all out here on the field for this last outdoor Sunday uh, time together. And Scott began our time asking if you know any Bible readers. And uh, we want to encourage you to, to be one. Here's a, here's a small part of the Bible And if you're a guest of ours this morning at the information tent, we have several of these. It's just it's just one little section out of the Bible that uh, one of the disciples, John, wrote about who Jesus is, and would encourage you to take that um, with you and to and 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 to read that. And also, and if you look at your program on the back of it, there's a QR code, and if you could just take your phone and uh, you can. Go to that uh, site there, and if you have questions um, about what you heard today, what you saw today, or just there's, a, there's even a box you could check there. It says, I'd, I'd like to know more about becoming a Christian, knowing Christ, and, and we'd love to help you think through this. Uh, or, or if you're just a guest today and you want to use this and just say, I'd like to get connected here. Um, this is a good way to do this, or you can use, uh, go to the information tent for that as well. Um, next week, we'll be back inside, and uh, 8.30 and 11 o'clock are two times that we'll have this type of service indoors, and so I encourage you to do that. And in between those times, there's a 10 o'clock hour where we have just some Sunday classes, and you can look on your program here, and there are several there. But if you've, if you've never been to one uh, called Essential Christianity, that's the one we'd encourage you to start with. And so that's it. every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. It'll just, it only goes for 12 weeks, um, and then it'll, just, it'll, it'll start up again. And, and Scott will be teaching that in between the services and encourage you to, um, if you've never been to that, would encourage you to do that. Just some of the, the basics of, of what the Bible teaches, what we believe. Well, it's good to have you this morning. Good to see all of you. Those of you that ran, uh, thank you for coming and, and be a part of that th- th- this morning. And we're going to do what we call a fun run now. And so the, uh, the starting line is uh, opening up right now. And if you would like to be part of the fun run, I'm going to ask you to come on up uh, right now. And so, so come, and we're just going to be lining up right here in front of the platform. And uh, it looks like some of you that have already 
uh, run, maybe the not so fun run, or coming to run the fun run now. So just get behind the the uh, the starting line. And where's Steve? Steve's already coming up. Come on up, my friend. That, Steve Hills is the one who uh, leads this every year. Let's give him a big round of applause here. And if you would, if you're not in the fun run, I'm going to ask you just to hang out with us because after Steve gets them started, I, I've just got a couple of things, some instructions about uh, the picnic, and, and we'll, we'll do that. But I'm going to turn it over to you, Steve, if you've got some instructions for these guys and these ladies, and you can start this fun run. Okay. I love the reference to fun run.